invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Matthew, the 24th chapter, verses 36 through 44. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Two men left in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The Gospel of our Lord. Thank you, God. Well, it's wonderful to have a celebration, a holiday like Thanksgiving. Uh, I know this is looking backwards just a bit, but you have to make note of the joy of gathering together with family and friends and food and that time of togetherness. You also come away just a little tired. It's good. It's nice to find a little piece of rest, too, right? Well, today is the beginning of Advent. Back uh, in the, well, a long time ago, 1973, there was a movie that came out. It was based on a play, a Broadway play, called Godsmith. I think every high school drama department has done it, as well as others and churches. But in 1973, going to see that movie at the Broadway theater, captured my imagination as a teenager. You see, this was not how church was ever meant to be. And here before us was this beautiful music and wonderful message in the, in the drama or the movie. I was mesmerized by the opening moments of this film. It begins in New York City with panning shots of the busyness of people in their daily work. <coughs> And in and around the city, you hear in the background the sound of the shofar. That's the horn, the ram's horn, that is blown to call the people to worship. And then, in a solo a cappella voice, you hear the words, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And he keeps singing it and repeating it and repeating it. And it's beautiful. All the while, the busyness of life is going on in New York City. But the song, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord, is calling out to the people in their daily life. Prepare the way of the Lord, and the song keeps calling out to them. The movie shows individuals at their work, individuals in the normal way of life, to come and prepare the way of the Lord. An artist puts down her portfolio and turns and walks towards the music, a taxi driver parks the car and gets out and uh, follows the sound of the music. A student puts down the books in the library and follows that sound of music. A waitress, a young man working in the garment district, all who hear the call to follow, prepare the way of the Lord. Well, as you know, that a cappella solo builds into a volume of music with more instruments being placed in, and there's dancing and all kinds of wonderful um, uh, visualization of people coming to follow what God is calling them to do. Prepare the way of the Lord. They left their old lives behind them and are now following towards that call. Should we pray? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as you lift the words before us today to prepare the way for you to come, we ask, Lord, that in this Advent time, you would work within our hearts to prepare the place for you, 
the coming of you and the Christ child at Christmas. So bless us, Lord, in this time of preparation. Amen. Amen. Well, we don't have a shofar this morning. Uh, the ram's horn to sound off. It would be kind of fun uh, to do. It uh, gets it going, you know, that call to worship. It could be sung forth. God is calling his people forth. He's calling you forth today. Today, that first Sunday in Advent, the season of Advent, begins the church year for us. And the traditional changing of the colors from Christ the King Sunday of white to the blue of Advent. Blue, the color of royalty. Royal blue. Hey, where have I heard that before? Back down here. Birth of a king who will be born in a manger, the royal blue. Advent and Lent are like bookends to Easter and Christmas, you see. Lent and Advent have the same meaning within them. They are a time of reflection, of repentance, a time of preparation and waiting and anticipation and longing. All of that is kind of the mood of Advent and Lent. And the difference, of course, is in the preparation for the coming of the Christ child and then in Jesus' death and resurrection. Advent is traditionally that time of preparing the way of the Lord in our hearts and in our lives and in our church. It also falls during uh, the darker time of the year. You know, even despite our shifting of the clocks and all of that, uh, you can go home at uh, 4.30 now, uh, it is dark outside. That increasing darkness is also makes us aware of the darkness of our sin and the darkness of that uh, in our own lives. And that there is a hope of light that is coming into the darkness, right? That Jesus is the light of the world and that Jesus is coming into the darkness. That's why the tradition of lighting the Advent wreath has been so meaningful for so many over the years. You begin with that one candle, and that light grows then each of the four Sundays before Christmas, and you light a different candle, until finally on Christmas Day, you light the last candle, the candle, the Christmas candle. Now, in our tradition here at Peace, we have on this side the Christ candle, or the Paschal candle. That candle is always lit within our worship, and it has two prominent times we're at the baptismal font, font when that light of Christ comes into our life and then upon our deaths in our funeral service where it is near the casket and reminds us of that light as well. The Advent wreath, or the Advent candles there, you have four of them and over the time they've had different meanings and if you are a little older you may remember them as prophecy and Bethlehem and shepherd candle. Uh, for most people now, and especially young kids uh, that are burning those candles, they are hope, they are love, joy, the third candle, and peace, the fourth candle. And again, the Christmas candle in the center of that week. It's not a bad thing to do in your own homes as well. To have that daily devotion in the morning or in the evening or whenever you find time to do it, to light that candle begin to prepare the way of the Lord, Jesus coming, in your own heart and in your own life and in your own home. Some of you may have a tradition or know the tradition with kids of having an Advent calendar. And on that, usually a sheet of paper or a cardboard of some sort, and there's a door or a little folding tab for each of the days, and you open it and there'll be something in it. So more elaborate ones that come uh, they'll have, uh, they're actually made out of wood, and they'll have a little, real, a little door there, and inside the door there'll be candy. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's enticing, isn't it? But remember, it's not about candy, I mean, well, trust me on that. It's about preparing our, the way of the Lord in our lives. So each of the days as we count up to Christmas, you see. So, Matthew's text drives this hard and home to us that there will be a day when he will come again, for which we must be prepared, because we don't know the time or the place or when or how, but just that we know that Christ will come again. And so we're left with that question, I am anyway, lingering in my head, am I ready? Are you ready? Are you prepared? 
Advent gives us that time to prepare, to get ready, to take heed or watch, because Jesus is coming. Well, listen, it's one of those things also that we're not very good at, at least I'm not, waiting. How many of you love, I'm good at waiting, you just, you just, you can wait all day long. Anyone? One person? Amen. 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 Amen.